This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Kim Braun. Aesop's Fables The Cock and the Jewel. A cock, scratching the ground for something to eat, turned up a jewel that had by chance been dropped there. Ho! said he, a fine thing you are, no doubt and, had your owner found you, great would his joy have been. But for me, give me a single grain of corn before all the jewels in the world. End of The Cock and the Jewel This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Kim Braun Aesop's Fables The Wolf and the Shepherd A wolf hung about near a flock of sheep for a long time, but made no attempt to molest them. The shepherd at first kept a sharp eye on him, for he naturally thought he meant mischief. But as time went by and the wolf showed no inclination to meddle with the flock, he began to look upon him more as a protector than as an enemy. And when one day some errand took him to the city, he felt no uneasiness at leaving the wolf with the sheep. But as soon as his back was turned, the wolf attacked them and killed the greater number. When the shepherd returned and saw the havoc he had wrought, he cried, It serves me right for trusting my flock to a wolf. End of The Wolf and the Shepherd This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Kim Braun. Aesop's Fables The Farmer and the Stork. A farmer set some traps in a field which he had lately sown with corn, in order to catch the cranes which came to pick up the seed. When he returned to look at his traps, he found several cranes caught, and among them a stork, which begged to be let go, and said, You ought not to kill me. I am not a crane, but a stork, as you can easily see by my feathers, and I am the most honest and harmless of birds. But the farmer replied, It's nothing to me what you are. I find you among these cranes who ruin my crops, and, like them, you shall suffer." If you choose bad companions, no one will believe that you are anything but bad yourself. End of The Farmer and the Stork This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Kim Braun Aesop's Fables The Charger and the Miller A horse, who had been used to carry his rider into battle, felt himself growing old, and chose to work in a mill instead. He now no longer found himself stepping out proudly to the beating of the drums, but was compelled to slave away all day grinding the corn. Bewailing his hard lot, he said one day to the miller, Ah, me! I was once a splendid war-horse, gaily caparisoned, and attended by a groom whose sole duty was to see to my wants. How different is my present condition! I wish I had never given up the battlefield for the mill." The miller replied with asperity, "'It's no use your regretting the past. Fortune has many ups and downs. You must just take them as they come.'" End of The Charger and the Miller This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, and to find out how to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Marion Brown, Toronto, Canada. Aesop's Fables by Aesop. The Grasshopper and the Owl. 
An owl, who lived in a hollow tree, was in the habit of feeding by night and sleeping by day, but her slumbers were greatly disturbed by the chirping of a grasshopper who had taken up his abode in the branches. She begged him repeatedly to have some consideration for her comfort, but the grasshopper, if anything, only chirped the louder. At last the owl could stand it no longer, but determined to rid herself of the pest by means of a trick. Addressing herself to the grasshopper, she said in her pleasantest manner, "'As I cannot sleep for your song, which, believe me, is as sweet as the notes of Apollo's lyre, I have a mind to taste some nectar which Minerva gave me the other day. Won't you come in and join me?' The grasshopper was flattered by the praise of his song, and his mouth, too, watered at the mention of the delicious drink. So he said he would be delighted. No sooner had he got inside the hollow where the owl was sitting than she pounced upon him and ate him up. End of The Grasshopper and the Owl This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information and to find out how to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Marion Brown, Toronto, Canada. Aesop's Fables by Aesop. The Grasshopper and the Ants. One fine day in winter, some ants were busy drying their store of corn, which had got rather damp during a long spell of rain. Presently up came a grasshopper, and begged them to spare her a few grains, for she said, I'm simply starving. The ants stopped work for a moment, though this was against their principles. May we ask, said they, what you were doing with yourself all last summer? Why didn't you collect a store of food for the winter? The fact is, replied the grasshopper, I was so busy singing that I hadn't the time. If you spent the summer singing, replied the ants, you can't do better than spend the winter dancing. And they chuckled and went on with their work. End of the Grasshopper and the Ants. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information and to find out how to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Marion Brown, Toronto, Canada. Aesop's Fables by Aesop. The Farmer and the Viper. One winter a farmer found a viper frozen and numb with cold, and out of pity picked it up and placed it in his bosom. The viper was no sooner revived by the warmth than it turned upon its benefactor and inflicted a fatal bite upon him. And as the poor man lay dying he cried, I have only got what I deserved for taking compassion on so villainous a creature. Kindness is thrown away upon the evil. End of The Farmer and the Viper This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Mike Phillips Aesop's Fables, The Two Frogs Two frogs were neighbors. One lived in a marsh, where there was plenty of water, which frogs love the other in a lane some distance away, where all the water to be had was that which lay in the ruts after rain. The marsh frog warned his friend, and pressed him to come and live with him in the marsh, for he would find his quarters there far more comfortable, and, what was still more important, more safe. But the other refused, saying that he could not bring himself to move from a place to which he had become accustomed. A few days afterwards, a heavy wagon came down the lane, and he was crushed to death under the wheels. End of Aesop's Fables, The Two Frogs This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Mike Phillips Aesop's Fables, The Cobbler Turned Doctor a very unskillful cobbler, finding himself unable to make a living at his trade, 
gave up mending boots and took to doctoring instead. He gave out that he had the secret of a universal antidote against all poisons and acquired no small reputation thanks to his talent for puffing himself. One day, however, he fell very ill, and the king of the country bethought him that he would test the value of his remedy. Calling, therefore, for a cup, he poured out a dose of the antidote, and under pretense of mixing poison with it, added a little water, and commanded him to drink it. Terrified by the fear of being poisoned, the cobbler confessed that he knew nothing about medicine, and that his antidote was worthless. Then the king summoned his subjects, and addressed them as follows. What folly could be greater than yours? Here is this cobbler to whom no one will send his boots to be mended, and yet you have not hesitated to entrust him with your lives. End of Aesop's Fables The Cobbler Turned Doctor This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Mike Phillips Aesop's Fables The Ass, the Cock, and the Lion An ass and a cock were in a cattle pen together. Presently a lion, who had been starving for days, came along and was just about to fall upon the ass and make a meal of him when the cock, rising to his full height and flapping his wings vigorously, uttered a tremendous crow. Now, if there is one thing that frightens a lion, it is the crowing of a cock, and this one had no sooner heard the noise than he fled. The ass was mightily elated at this, and thought that, if the lion wouldn't face a cock, he would be still less likely to stand up to an ass. So he ran out and pursued him. But when the two had got well out of sight and hearing of the cock, the lion suddenly turned upon the ass and ate him up. False confidence often leads to disaster. End of Aesop's Fables The Ass, the Cock, and the Lion This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org Recorded by R.K. Aesop's Fables The Belly and the Members The members of the body once rebelled against the belly. You, they said to the belly, live in luxury and sloth, and never do a stroke of work, while we not only have to do all the hard work there is to be done, but are actually your slaves, and have to minister to all your wants. Now, we will do so no longer, and you can shift for yourself for the future. They were as good as their word, and left the belly to starve. The result was just what might have been expected. The whole body soon began to fail, and the members and all shared in the general collapse. And then they saw too late, how foolish they had been. End of The Belly and the Members This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org Recorded by R.K. Aesop's Fables the bald man and the fly. A fly settled on the head of a bald man and bit him. In his eagerness to kill it, he hit himself a smart slap. But the fly escaped and said to him in derision, You tried to kill me for just one little bite. What will you do to yourself now for the heavy smack you have just given yourself? Oh, for that blow I bear no grudge, he replied, for I never intended myself any harm. But as for you, you contemptible insect, who live by sucking human blood, I would have borne a good deal more than that for the satisfaction of dashing the life out of you. End of 
the bald man and the fly this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org recorded by rk aesop's fables the ass and the wolf an ass was feeding in a meadow and catching sight of his enemy the wolf in the distance pretended to be very lame and hobbled painfully along when the wolf came up he asked the ass how come he came to be so lame and the ass replied that in going through a hedge he had trodden on a thorn and he begged the wolf to pull it out with his teeth in case he said when you eat me it should stick in your throat and hurt you very much the wolf said he would and told the ass to lift up his foot and gave his whole mind to getting out the thorn but the ass suddenly let out with his heels and fetched the wolf a fearful kick in the mouth breaking his teeth and then he galloped off at full speed as soon as he could speak the wolf growled to himself it serves me right my father taught me to kill and i ought to have stuck to that trade instead of attempting to cure end of the ass and the wolf this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org recorded by paul harvey aesop's fables the monkey and the camel at a gathering of all the beasts the monkey gave an exhibition of dancing and entertained the company fastly there was great applause at the finish which excited the envy of the camel and made him desire to win the favor of the assembly by the same means so he got up from his place and began dancing but he cut such a ridiculous figure as he plunged about and made such a grotesque exhibition of his ungainly person that the beasts all fell upon him with ridicule and drove him away End of The Monkey and the Camel This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Paul Harvey Aesop's Fables The Sick Man and the Doctor a sick man received a visit from his doctor, who asked him how he was. "'Fairly well, doctor,' said he, "'but I find I sweat a great deal.' "'Ah,' said the doctor, "'that's a good sign.' On his next visit he asked the same question, and his patient replied, "'I'm much as usual, but I've taken to having shivering fits, which leave me cold all over.' "'Ah,' said the doctor, "'that's a good sign, too.' When he came the third time, and inquired as before about his patient's health, the sick man said that he felt very feverish. "'A very good sign,' said the doctor. "'You are doing very nicely indeed.' Afterwards a friend came to see the invalid, and, on asking how he did, received this reply. "'My dear friend, I'm dying of good signs.' End the sick man and the doctor this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org recorded by paul harvey aesop's fables the travelers and the plain tree Two travelers were walking along a bare and dusty road in the heat of a summer's day. Coming presently to a plane tree, 
they joyfully turned aside to shelter from the burning rays of the sun in the deep shade of its spreading branches. As they rested, looking up into the tree, one of them remarked to his companion, "'What a useless tree the plain is! It bears no fruit, and is of no service to man at all!' The plain tree interrupted him with indignation. "'You ungrateful creature!' it cried. "'You come and take shelter under me from the scorching sun, "'and then, in the very act of enjoying the cool shade of my foliage, "'you abuse me and call me good for nothing?' "'Many a service is met with ingratitude.'" End The Travelers and the Plain Tree This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Fenchurch. Aesop's Fables. The Flea and the Ox. A flea once said to an ox, How comes it that a big strong fellow like you is content to serve mankind, and do all their hard work for them, while I, whom no bigger than you see, live on their bodies, and drink my fill of their blood, and never do a stroke for it all? To which the ox replied, Men are very kind to me, and so I am grateful to them. They feed and house me well, and every now and then they show their fondness for me by patting me on the head and neck. They'd pet me too, said the flea, if I let them. But I take good care they don't, or there would be nothing left of me. End of The Flea and the Ox This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Aesop's Fables The Birds, the Beasts, and the Bat The birds were at war with the beasts, and many battles were fought with varying success on either side. The bat did not throw in his lot definitely with either party, but when things went well for the birds, he was found fighting in their ranks. When, on the other hand, the beasts got the upper hand, he was to be found among the beasts. No one paid any attention to him while the war lasted. But when it was over and peace was restored, neither the birds nor the beasts would have anything to do with so double-faced a traitor. And so he remains to this day a solitary outcast from both. The End of the Birds, the Beasts, and the Bat This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Aesop's Fables The Man and His Two Sweethearts a man of middle age, whose hair was turning gray, had two sweethearts, an old woman and a young one. The elder of the two didn't like having a lover who looked so much younger than herself. So whenever he came to see her, she used to pull the dark hairs out of his head to make him look old. The younger, on the other hand, didn't like him to look so much older than herself, and took every opportunity of pulling out the gray hairs to make him look young. Between them, they left not a hair on his head, and he became perfectly bald. The End of the Man and His Two Sweethearts This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Christine Dewar, Thanona Sassa, Florida. Aesop's Fables The Eagle, The Jackdaw, and The Shepherd One day a jackdaw saw an eagle swoop down on a lamb and carry it off in its talons. "'My word,' said the jackdaw, "'I'll do that myself.' So it flew high up into the air, 
and then came shooting down with a great whirring of wings onto the back of a big ram. It had no sooner alighted than its claws got caught fast in the wool, and nothing it could do was of any use. There it stuck, flapping away and only making things worse instead of better. By and by up came the shepherd. Oh ho, he said, so that's what you'd be doing, is it? And he took the jackdaw and clipped its wings and carried it home to his children. It looked so odd that they didn't know what to make of it. What sort of bird is it, father? they asked. It's a jackdaw, he replied, and nothing but a jackdaw, but it wants to be taken for an eagle. If you attempt what is beyond your power, your trouble will be wasted, and you court not only misfortune, but ridicule. End of the Eagle, the Jackdaw, and the Shepherd. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Aesop's Fables The Wolf and the Boy. A wolf, who had just enjoyed a good meal and was in a playful mood, caught sight of a boy lying flat upon the ground and realizing that he was trying to hide and that it was fear of himself that made him do this he went up to him and said aha i found you you see but if you can say three things to me the truth of which cannot be disputed i will spare your life the boy plucked up courage and thought for a moment and then he said first it is a pity you saw me secondly i was a fool to let myself be seen and thirdly we all hate wolves because they are always making unprovoked attacks upon our flocks the wolf replied well what you say is true enough from your point of view so you may go end of the wolf and the boy this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org aesop's fables the miller his son and their ass a miller accompanied by his son was driving his ass to market in hopes of finding a purchaser for him on the road they met a troop of girls laughing and talking who exclaimed did you ever see such a pair of fools to be trudging along the dusty roads when they might be riding the miller thought there was sense in what they said so he made his son mount the ass and himself walked at the side presently they met some of his old cronies who greeted them and said you'll spoil that son of yours letting him ride while you toil along on foot make him walk young lazybones it'll do him all the good in the world the miller followed their advice and took his son's place on the back of the ass while the boy trudged along behind they had not gone far when they overtook a party of women and children and the, and the miller heard them say what a selfish old man he himself rides in comfort but lets his poor little boy follow as best he can on his own legs so he made his son get up behind him further along the road they met some travelers who asked the miller whether the ass he was riding was his own property or a beast hired for the occasion he replied that it was his own and he was taking it to the market to sell good heavens said they with a load like that that poor beast will be so exhausted by the time he gets there that no one will look at him why you'd be better to carry him anything to please you said the old man but we can try so they got off, tied the ass's legs together with a rope and slung him on a pole, and at last reached the town, carrying him between them. This was so absurd a sight that the people ran out in crowds to laugh at it and chafe the father and son unmercifully, some even calling them lunatics. They had gotten to the bridge over the river, where the ass, frightened by the noise and his unusual situation, kicked and struggled till he broke the ropes that bound him and fell into the water and was drowned whereupon the unfortunate miller vexed and ashamed made the best of his way home again convinced that in trying to please all he had pleased none and had lost his ass in the bargain end of aesop's fables the miller his son and their ass this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Christine Dewar, Venona Sassa, Florida. Aesop's Fables The Stag and the Vine A stag, 
pursued by the huntsmen, concealed himself under cover of a thick vine. They lost track of him, and passed by his hiding-place without being aware that he was anywhere near. Supposing all danger to be over, he presently began to browse on the leaves of the vine. The movement drew the attention of the returning huntsmen, and one of them, supposing some animal to be hidden there, shot an arrow at a venture into the foliage. The unlucky stag was pierced to the heart, and as he expired, he said, I deserve my fate for my treachery in feeding upon the leaves of my protector. Ingratitude sometimes brings its own punishment. End of the Stag and the Vine This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Melanie, Worcestershire, UK. Aesop's Fables The Archer and the Lion An archer went up into the hills to get some sport with his bow and all the animals fled at the sight of him, with the exception of the lion, who stayed behind and challenged him to fight. But he shot an arrow at the lion, and hit him, and said, There, you see what my messenger can do. Just you wait a moment, and I'll tackle you myself. The lion, however, when he felt the sting of the arrow, ran away, as fast as his legs could carry him. A fox, who had seen it all happen, said to the lion, Come, don't be a coward. Why don't you stay and show fight? But the lion replied, You won't get me to stay, not you. Why, when he sends a messenger like that before him, he must himself be a terrible fellow to deal with. Give a wide berth to those who can do damage at a distance. End of The Archer and the Lion This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox Dot org. Recorded by Melanie, Worcestershire, UK. Aesop's Fables The Lamb Chased by a Wolf A wolf was chasing a lamb, which took refuge in a temple. The wolf urged it to come out of the precincts, and said, If you don't, the priest is sure to catch you and offer you up in sacrifice on the altar. To which the lamb replied, Thanks, I think I'll stay where I am. I'd rather be sacrificed any day than be eaten up by a wolf. End of The Lamb Chased by a Wolf